So it's been officially more than one month since I left Canada to come to Ho Chi Minh City to start my journey as a digital nomad, or I guess trying out the digital nomad lifestyle. And throughout the last five weeks, it has, it's been a lot. For me and I wanted to make this video as sort of like a reflection on how everything has been going, what I've been loving, how I think I can improve my digital nomad journey because honestly it's been hard to work and meet up with people and travel at the same time and I know this is like not like a educational video. I don't know if this is going to be useful for you but I have been sharing bits and pieces of what it's like trying out the digital nomad lifestyle on my Instagram stories and so some of you know that I've been having like the time Time of my life hanging out with people but also it has been so hard to work and focus and be productive because so much is happening all at once so even though this has been something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time there are still a lot of ups and downs and yeah even though I've like I guess made it like I have achieved the dream that I had for myself eight years ago and I feel like because I see this as oh I'm living my dream I actually put a lot of pressure on myself to to be happy and to have a good time. But sometimes I just, I'm not like having a good time. So I think this goes to show that even when you have achieved your dream, it's not amazing the whole time and there's still struggles. <laughs> <laughs> that you might go through or just that you have newer and different kinds of problems in your life compared to before you achieve that dream. So you might be wondering how I have been feeling since I left Vancouver five weeks ago. I think overall it has been so amazing and I'm generally like so happy to be here in Ho Chi Minh City but it has also been super overwhelming. I don't speak Vietnamese. There are a bazillion motorbikes on the streets. <laughs> It's really crazy. Like I have never seen so many motorbikes in my life <laughs> and it's hard to cross the streets. It's just different than what I'm used to. And so I think right when I arrived, everything just hit me all at once. And Ho Chi Minh City is known for being like a super duper busy city compared to all of the other cities in Vietnam. Like it's super dense, so many cars and motorbikes and people and just so much happening all at once. It definitely took me some time to get used to it and I feel like five weeks later I'm finally like I finally feel settled into this city but actually in two days I'm gonna be leaving to go to Da Nang which is a more like a beach city but still a city more north it's in the like central part of Vietnam so now I have to go there and settle down but I think because I've been in Vietnam for a while now like I know some basic phrases Ooh, let me practice my Vietnamese and show you I'm like so proud of this one sentence Doi Hom Bit Thing yet. I'm kind of getting more familiar. So in the last five weeks, I didn't just arrive by myself. Two days after I arrived in Ho Chi Minh City, one of my friends from Vancouver came here as well. And then another one of my friends from Vancouver came here. So I felt like for them, it's more like the time that they were here, it's more like a vacation and holiday. Actually, one friend is also supposed to be like working here, but she's only here for 10 days. So you can't really work and explore if you only have 10 days so it was just really really hard to work and we were also living together and it's hard for me to film videos when there's other people there so I think that was probably the most difficult part like trying to work but then also trying to have fun and meet up with people and travel but I would have to say like this whole month has been really really so fun probably one of the funnest months I've had in my life <laughs> and I have honestly been loving it. So Leo, who is my good friend here, she asked me yesterday, what are my top three things that I love about my trip so far? And I told her the first thing was all the people that I've met. So I knew Leo from before, but we are like so much more close and I'm so happy that I came to visit her and she's like showing me around. It's just been like so fun to go to her hood. And she's been like promoting Vietnam to me since forever, so I'm so glad glad I could finally come here and experience how amazing this place is. And then I also met two of my YouTube subscribers in Ho Chi Minh City. They've basically become like friends. 
<laughs> it's just so cool to be able to connect with people who found me on the internet and then I said hey if anyone wants to meet up like let me know and then they messaged me so honestly I think the people has been probably the highlight for sure when I'm here like I definitely don't feel lonely I feel like it has been so fun and there have been just so many people around me. It's been really amazing to get to know people and hear how they live their life, what they're doing in, in their career, their perspective on things. And yeah, it's just, I feel like in Vancouver, I'm sort of in a bubble. Like my friends in Vancouver, we all basically went to the same high school or same university and we're all very similar minded. Whenever I leave Vancouver and whenever I travel, and it's not just in Vietnam, it's every single place that I travel. I just, I love meeting people from all over over and hearing a, a different perspective on life or hearing how they do things and just getting to know different kinds of people who in Vancouver it would be really hard for me to meet. My second favorite thing about the last five weeks is probably all of the beauty things that I have been doing in Vietnam. Like I got my eyebrows microbladed and micro shaded. I just got a touch up yesterday that's why they look sort of dark. They actually won't be this dark because they need to peel and flake off and then that's going to be the actual result. So please Please ignore my very dark eyebrows. And then I also got my eyelash extension. And the third thing, like when I was talking to my friend, I actually wasn't sure what the third thing was. I said food, but I'm actually not a really big foodie, but I've been really loving the food here, but I'm not like a super, big foodie. So I would say the third thing is probably the weather because it is hot. And in Vancouver right now, it is cold. I like warm weather in general. And it's been so nice to be able to wear like tank tops and shorts and not be freezing in the rain. I think for me being in a place where it's like not raining all the time, it's more important than the temperature. I want to share three things that I've learned and things that I want to improve about my digital nomad experience. So the first thing is my work slash travel balance. So one thing I'll do differently is I think I'll definitely stay in one place longer. And I have been in Ho Chi Minh City for more than a month, but I've kind of been, well, I've been living with friends and then also moving around. And then I did two shorter trips out of the city. So it's been a lot of like moving around. It was really hard for me to feel settled in and grounded. So I think from now on, when I'm planning my trip, I'm going to try to stay longer in each place so I can really slow down, get my work done, be productive, but then also have enough time to explore the parts of the place that I want to explore. Oh yeah, I also have major FOMO, so this is hard for me <laughs> to be in a place, but then I feel like I should be working, but then I should also be exploring because I don't want to miss out because I'm probably not going to go there again in my life or for a really long time. I think I have to be okay with not being able to see everything. It's, it's really interesting because when I'm out having fun, I feel bad that I'm not working. And then when I'm working, I feel bad that I'm wasting time because I'm not exploring. This is like something I definitely have to work on. So another thing I can improve is definitely having a consistent routine because in Vancouver I'm like such a routine person like I'll wake up at the same time I'll go for a run I have the same breakfast I do this like I'll journal I'll meditate and then I'll start work and then in the evening I have a routine as well but I think after arriving because I've been living with friends and then also doing different things all the time and it, I basically didn't have a routine yeah I think that's like another reason why I just don't feel that grounded and I feel super scattered all the time so from now on, what I'm going to do is when I look for a place to stay for accommodation, I'm going to definitely look for places where there is a park nearby or a beach nearby because I really do need to run. Like running is a huge part of my routine. And if I don't run at least two to three times a week, I just feel not Good. And then I also want to be more consistent with waking up at the same time and doing my like morning routine, which includes meditating, doing my runs, and also eating the same breakfast every day. I actually don't like going out for breakfast and like eating different things. I like eating the same thing every single day. So actually in Ho Chi Minh City, a lot of my breakfasts have been the same thing. It's been onigiri, which is not Vietnamese. It's like a Japanese rice thing covered, uh, wrapped in seaweed. Onigiri from the convenience store 
store with milk. So I just eat that for breakfast. And then another thing I definitely want to do when I go to a new country is before I go to the country, I want to spend at least two to three hours learning the language. I know three hours is like not a lot of time for learning the language, but just getting like the basic stuff like hello, goodbye, thank you, how much is this, the numbers, so I can like when they tell me the price of things, I can know what the price is and just like very basic things. I feel like I didn't do that for Vietnam and it would have been good if I did that. Oh yeah, and then also learning some like common food words like rice or noodle and chicken, beef, fish, stuff like that. So you might be wondering, what is my plan now? And so in two days, I will be in Da Nang. So by the time you watch this video, which I think will be posted on March 24th, I will be in Da Nang. I'm going there for at least two weeks and then I am still deciding where to go. So if you want to meet up, let me know by sending me a message on Instagram with where you are located because I actually, I basically choose where I'm gonna go based on where my people are at, like either my friends, or if I have a whole bunch of subscribers or followers or past clients, like I will go there because my favorite part about traveling is meeting different people. If you do want to meet up and you are in Southeast Asia, let me know by sending me a message on Instagram and also follow me on Instagram because that's where I share like my latest itineraries. So this is the first time that I'm doing this kind of a video, like this topic where I'm just kind of sharing what's been going on, what I'm learning and how I want to improve things. Let me know if you like this kind of video. I will definitely keep making like my Etsy videos and my tips videos for YouTube and for growing a business and sharing my business journey. But I also really like just documenting my journey. And I think a lot of you commented on my other videos saying that it's also your dream to be a digital nomad. So hopefully by me sharing this, it's also helpful for you to see, okay, even though I've basically achieved my dream, I still have a lot of challenges <laughs> that I have to like work through. So if you like this video, Video, maybe I'll make more and watch this video next if you want to learn how exactly I got to this point of achieving my dream of being a digital nomad. <laughs>